Hello all and welcome to the Lucretia Report. I'm Ian and today we look at history and not revisionism. Support this channel by subscribing, giving the video a like, and leaving a comment, and consider supporting the channel at Patreon.com. For the second time in the last four years, there's a movement to remove symbols and monuments to the Confederacy, and exactly the people who you would think would object to it are objecting to it vigorously. So in this video, we're going to debunk the bad faith arguments that historical revisionists use to argue that monuments to white supremacy and treason should be left in places of reverence for an eternity. The four big arguments that people make in favor of Confederate monuments are A, taking down these monuments is erasing history, B, taking down these monuments is disrespecting the dead, C, the heritage over hate argument, and D, the slippery slope argument. We're going to address all of these because they're all BS and we want to show you exactly how. Quick plug, a lot of what's in this video I wrote about on Quora, so go follow me there, link in the description. Let's start with argument number one. You're erasing history. You can't erase history. People will argue that these monuments are some kind of a historical educator, but they simply aren't. Imagine this. Let's say you want to write a paper on Robert E. Lee for school. So you go down to your local Robert E. Lee monument in Mariana, Arkansas. At the base sits a flower bed with a fountain making the scene serene, and above you Lee stands atop a 20-foot column, gallantly looking out into the distance, his hand on his sword. You go in to read the inscriptions, hoping that they will give you some valuable historical insight because of how great monuments are at teaching about history. You see a Latin phrase that you don't understand, the numbers 1861 and 1865, and the words erected by D.C. Govan, chapter U.D.C., in loving memory of Lee County's Confederate soldiers. No braver bled for a brighter land had a cost so grand. Slightly confused, you look at another side where the inscription reads, Their memories e'er shall remain for us, and their names, bright names, without stain for us, are heroes in gray. The back side you see says, Upward, onward, no retreat. They struggled, they toiled, they conquered defeat. Those men with their thinning locks of gray, God bless those boys of the 60s, are veterans of today. You think to yourself, funny that they would say that the people that lost the war conquered defeat. And on the fourth and final side you see the words, Dead heroes did we hear one say, Dead never. They will live for a in hearts of love, on history's page they'll live through every coming age, they'll live while valor's deeds are sung in praise from the heart and the tongue. You look up and scratch your head a little, realizing that this has provided you with no useful information and that you would have had better luck visiting Lee's Wikipedia page than visiting his monument. You do notice, though, that these inscriptions called the Confederates heroes twice, called them brave, said that their cause was grand, said that their valor's deeds are sung in praise, said that their names will live without stain, and called on God to bless the Confederates. This statue wasn't built to preserve history, you realize. It does a terrible job of that. This statue was built to glorify the Confederates and their cause, which it explicitly calls grand. And what was their cause? It was the preservation of slavery. That's not an opinion. That is a historical fact. In his so-called cornerstone speech about the guiding philosophies behind the Confederacy, Vice President of the Confederacy Alexander Stevens says that, Its foundations are laid. Its cornerstone rests upon the great truth that the Negro is not equal to the white man. That slavery, subordination to the superior race, is his natural and normal condition. This, our new government, is the first in the history of the world based upon this great physical, philosophical, and moral truth. 
When Arkansas, the state in which this monument stands, declared its secession from the Union, in its declaration of secession, it said that its number one reason for seceding was that people of the northern states have organized a political party, purely sectional in character, the central and controlling idea of which is hostility to the institution of African slavery as it exists in the southern states. They also complained that they have degraded American citizens by placing them upon an equality with Negroes. They also talk about slavery several other times in their Declaration of Secession, as do all of the ten other Confederate states. It is historical fact that the cause of the Confederacy, the cause which this monument refers to as grand, was the preservation of slavery. The purpose of this monument was not to teach. It was to glorify the Confederacy and to remind the black residents of Mariana, who make up three quarters of the town, that they live in a Confederate state, and that white supremacy will be enforced in that Confederate state. Hazard a guess real quick. When do you think that this monument was built? 1865? 66? 67? Okay, 1870 at the latest, right? Wrong. 1910. 45 years after the end of the Civil War. Few of the Confederate monuments that exist today were built in the years immediately following the Civil War. Most of them were built in two big spikes, one in the turn of the century and one in the late 50s and 60s. What was happening during these times? Well, in 1896, the Supreme Court ruled on Plessy v. Ferguson, legalizing segregation in the United States. And almost immediately afterwards, the United Daughters of the Confederacy, a historical revisionist group, started erecting Confederate monuments all over the country. As these monuments were being erected, we saw the Ku Klux Klan reemerge in 1915, the Tulsa Massacre in 1921, the 1900 Robert Charles Massacre in New Orleans, the 1906 Atlanta Massacre, and the 1910 Slocum Massacre, amongst others. The second peak started just after Brown vs. the Board of Education, and backlash to the Civil Rights Movement. This period would see black people pushing for their rights and white supremacists responding with bombing and arson attacks against black churches, lynchings, the assassinations of black leaders like Martin Luther King, and police violence against demonstrators. These are monuments to white supremacy. But don't take my word for it. Ask the people who put them up, like Julian Carr who, when he dedicated a monument on the University of North Carolina's campus, said that it commemorated Confederate soldiers for their defense of the Anglo-Saxon race during the four years after the war, when their courage and steadfastness saved the very life of the Anglo-Saxon race in the South. These monuments just don't preserve history. There are 175 symbols to Lee in the United States, like the one in Mariana, and what does the average person know about Robert E. Lee? That he was a Confederate general, that he surrendered at Appomattox, and probably not much more than that? The average German, on the other hand, knows a lot more about Adolf Hitler, Joseph Goebbels, Hermann Goering, Rudolf Hess, Heinrich Himmler than the average American does about Robert E. Lee. And do you know how many monuments to Nazis there are in Germany? Zero. That brings me to the second argument that a lot of people make in favor of these monuments. You're disrespecting the dead! People have been making that point about how there are no Nazi statues in Germany for a little while now, and the right finally has a retort. A bad one, but a retort all the same. They've come to start saying, well, there are Holocaust museums in Germany and Holocaust memorials, and tearing down these Confederate statues would be like tearing down a Holocaust memorial. And oh my god, are those not the same. This is not how you remember the dead. This is not how you remember the horrors of slavery. This is a memorial to the dead, and this. This is a memorial to Civil War dead. This is a memorial to slavery. This is a memorial to the Holocaust. But this is a memorial to Robert E. Lee and the cause he stood for. You do not remember the dead by putting up statues of generals and politicians. The Robert E. Lee Monument in Mariana, Arkansas is not the same as the memorial to the murdered Jews of Europe. If it was, it would feature Lee's victims and not Lee. Sometimes people will say, sure, slavery was bad. But these monuments represent our heritage, and there's more to Southern culture than just slavery. Again, though, 
are these monuments to your heritage? Or are they monuments to a cause, and to the people who fought for that cause? If this is really all about southern heritage, then why are 144 of them, almost 10%, located in states that weren't in the Confederacy? How do these represent the heritage of California and Pennsylvania and Iowa? If anything, these are antithetical to the heritage of those places because those states fought against the men these statues represent. If you want to represent southern heritage, why not fly this flag, or this one, instead of this one? Why a statue of Lee and not a statue of Francis Marion, or a monument to the Battle of Calpins? Why not commemorate great Southerners like Dwight Eisenhower of Texas and Jackie Robinson of Georgia? Why does Southern heritage have to be confined to a time shorter than the run of Phineas and Ferb? You know there's more to Southern history than that, right? Unless... Unless it's not about heritage. I would also ask, is your heritage really Southern? Because when surveys ask, people don't say that their heritage is Southern, they say that it's German or English or something like that, and in the South in particular, there are two heritages which dominate, which don't dominate in most other parts of the country. The first one is Black. I think that when a lot of people think of Southerners, they forget that a lot of Southerners are Black. 37% of people in Mississippi, 32% in Louisiana, compared to just 13% nationwide. Of the top 12 states by black population, 11 of them were Confederate states, and one is Maryland, on the border of the Confederacy. That's all the Confederate states, by the way. So for a lot of Southerners, their heritage in the Confederacy was being enslaved. The other most common one is American, because they're so American that this is the only part of the country where most white people don't say that they're German or English or something else. They say that they're American, right? Except for that they support the Confederacy? Someone asked me once, is there a northern version of the Confederate flag? And my answer was, yes. This is it. The Confederates were fighting against America. They rebelled from America. They tried to destroy America. Don't say that you love America if you fly the flag that tried to break it and embrace the people who tried to destroy it. <sighs> Finally, we had the slippery slope argument. The idea that if we start taking down Confederate statues, next thing you know, people are going to want to take down statues of Jefferson and Washington, and if that happens, uh, I don't know, does the devil get dominion over the earth or something? In response to this, I would say, first of all, who cares? They're just statues. They don't have feelings. They're not alive. They're statues. The world is not going to end if they come down. Second of all, that's a logical fallacy. Like, literally, the slippery slope is one of the most famous logical fallacies. These statues that people are pointing to, they're not being taken down because they feature Lincoln and Roosevelt. No one's calling to pull down any other statues of those people. If you zoom out and look at the whole statue, you'll see that these statues are being taken down not because they feature Lincoln and Roosevelt, but because of all the other things in the statue that depict a racial hierarchy that puts black people at the bottom and white people at the top. Tearing down statues of people like Washington and Jefferson is a fringe idea that's not supported by most activists, because sure, they own slaves, but that's not what they're known for. Statues, like I said, don't teach history. They represent what the person depicted is most known for and glorify it. And Washington is most known for the birth of America, but Lee is most known for fighting to destroy America and to preserve slavery. They're not the same. Regardless, though, the world's not going to end if a few statues come down. And even if something happens that you think goes too far, that doesn't negate the righteousness of a movement. You can't put your boot on someone's neck for 400 years and be surprised when they come up swinging. These are not preservations of history. They are not monuments to the dead. They are not monuments to heritage. And they are not like every other monument. These are monuments to white supremacy and to treason. Sic Semper Tyrannus. Hey guys, I hope that you enjoyed that. If you did, please be sure to give it a like and leave a comment down below. You can watch another video here and please consider subscribing here. 
Also, please consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash lucretiareport. Thanks, I'll see you next week.